Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the grind. We're playing against E4 as black. We're playing Fabrizio from Brasilia. It really bothers me that that goes up and not down. I got a little distracted there by a bug. It's finally burned into my memory that when white has sort of this pattern here, whether it be two pawns in the knight or two pawns and another pawn on c3 over here. The play is just to take on e4 there and then follow that up with f5. It's in my brain now, it's in my brain. I think I played a game, let's see, at the beginning of last week where I couldn't remember what to do there. And then it kind of came back to me after the game, so... My memories, my memories coming back. So if he goes bishop d3, he essentially hangs a pawn if he wants to protect the knight. I need to remember that. He is thinking. He is thinking with intent. Yeah, so that actually hangs up on. I think that's the move. He can go knight of three and just attack the queen here. But let's see if he figures that out. Yeah, he figures that out. That's fine. I think I want to maintain the pin on the light square bishop here. So I kind of want to just fall back to d8 to tell you the truth. I'll just go back D8. He's much more developed than me. Obviously, he has like three very active pieces here. But I think just getting that central pawn was pretty important. I kind of want to just take his knight on e4, have his bishop take it, and then take his queen so he can lose his castling rights.
Okay. So that doesn't really work anymore. So I don't want to take the queen now, because he just gets a rook out onto the open file, and then it's bad times for me. If he were to go something like knight h4 right now, I'd probably just take his knight. I don't really want to have the open h file. Okay, so if he goes here, I'd be forced back to like g6. And I could only really recapture with the... Hmm. I mm, believe that's just a free knight. Am I missing something? Whatever, I'm going to just take free stuff. Am I missing something here? I know he can give me check, but I can block in with the knight. Oh. I'm going to take the queen here. Almost fell for that. Still up quite a bit. If he checks me, I just block him with the knight and develop it. Didn't quite understand knight c5. I think he was just trying to bait my queen. That seemed like all that he was going after there. Kind of want to offer the trade here. Can't go d7. Could just try to kick this piece. He's just going to fall back to h4 if I play h6. I'll offer the trade this way. My knight's going to be a little bit vulnerable. Because um, I won't be able to... He can pin my knight, essentially. And I can't really defend it. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming. Still have two defenders there, but this does allow me to get the knight out to d7. I think this just might be a no castling game. I have two defenders on e7 here, so I'm not too concerned for the time being.
Hmm. Could go just kick this knight. This pawn's under attack. Still pinned here. If he gets out to f5, he basically has three attackers on this bishop, and then it's going to be kind of bad news for me. Really tempted to just not castle this game. I think I have to play g5 here. I think I have to just keep threatening. Don't really want to go for the triple stack on the f5. I think I may have to just forego castling in this game. Yeah, I'm up quite a bit, so maybe castling is not the most important thing. Yeah. He takes the pawn, but I can take his bishop. Yeah, it was just one knight move away from castling, but the queen trade kind of threw things off a bit. Yeah. And then that knight c5 thing was interesting too. I have to just move my king over here. He has to decide what's more important here, this pawn or his bishop. Yeah, actually, if he goes back to g3, I can just trap in his bishop, which is kind of nice. I think the bishop's a goner. I think his best bet is actually just to take the pawn here, to tell you the truth. Oh, really? No way. I didn't think I had that much of an advantage here. I guess what I was seeing was that if he moves the bishop back, it gets trapped in, and then his knight is essentially, I mean, kind of useless. But uh, yeah, that's what I saw happening here at least. But um, let's see where the uh, advantage really swung here. Yeah, see, I actually do think taking this knight was the play here because then it opens up this line. But I didn't want to... Have the rook here on the D file. That just seemed like a blunder, giving away a free piece like that. And the queen trade here was the thing to do. Uh, so blocking in with the F pawn. Yeah. Probably should have done that, huh? G6. Protect this pawn. I see. Hmm. Yeah, I guess when he just gave away his knight for free on c5, it was kind of GG, but he still could have punished me here. So what could he have done here? He permitted the opponent to win a knight by eventually adding pressure to a pin piece. Yeah, I figured this. No? 
Yeah, I actually thought he, no, he shouldn't take here, huh? Bishop takes. Okay. And the knight takes. This takes. And yeah, here he would have two attackers on the knight, and there would be nothing that I could do to support that knight. But I could castle, right? So he could essentially get a free knight here. Right? Yeah. I think if he had just applied more pressure to e7, he would have been better off there. But um, yeah, I guess h6 was a blunder, but I kind of got lucky because he followed it up with a uh, blunder of his own. Yeah, I was in a bad spot here with uh, the pin on e7. But it looks like he just didn't punish it enough. But yeah, losing the, the knight for free on c5 was uh, kind of where the game turned. Well, we're at 950. We're 50 points away. Let's take a look. We're almost there. Getting closer and closer. <laughs> it's essentially like what? 50 divided by 8. 8. Uh, it's basically like 10. No. Maybe 7 or 8 more wins. Yeah, so we're getting really close. But uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching. And see you in the next one.